Hare Krishna Maharaj as well. Thank you for uh, coming here to do an interview with us. So Maharaj, can you just introduce yourself a little bit? Okay. Um, I am Bhakti Vasudeva Swami. My professional name is Dr. Vasudeva Das. Dr. Vasudeva Das in the sense that I have a PhD in Applied Management and Decision Sciences with a focus on leadership and organizational change. I have over 35 publications in peer reviewed journals. And my focus is on integrating management science concepts and constructs with Gaudiya Vaishnav technologies and profile solutions to leadership, management, and social issues in the global village. Recently, I had uh, research conducted and presented at the World Academy of Science, Engineering and Technology here in London, uh, uh, 2021, 28 June 2021. And that presentation, that research was on how chanting the Hare Krishna Maman to help to prevent financial fraud. And the team, because we are presenting this in uh, at a forum where people, people normally don't believe in religion, so it's a little bit uh, technical and scientifically pre presented. So the team is Sonic Therapeutic Intervention for Preventing Financial Fraud, a phenomenological study. I bet the whole content is about how channeling the Hare Krishna Mahal Mantra transforms people's heart that they become, you know, distracted from becoming involved in financial fraud. <laughs> yeah. I joined a movement uh, in 1984. I got initiated first and second initiation by Bhakti Tita Swami, a disciple of uh, founder, his co-founder Chai AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. And I got my science initiation from Jayapatika Swami Maharaj. He was zoning as Jayapatika Swami Maharaj in Mayapur. So I'm, uh, uh, I was born in Nigeria. I joined the movement in Nigeria. But then uh, I'm a U.S. citizen. I got a um, Invitations to come to the U.S. to present, make presentations at conferences, and then eventually I stayed off. I stayed in the U.S. Became a citizen, so I, I've been living in the U.S. over the years. I traveled around the world, presenting Krishna consciousness in a very scientific way to the scientific world, and also going around to our different ISKCON communities around the world and helping, especially the youths, to reinvigorate their integration of Studies and sudden. Thank you, Maharaj. So the next question is, what advice would you give to someone struggling to find a career path? Uh, there are about, I think there's a lot of problem with a number of people uh, struggling with career path. And I know that for you to be able to get a proper a sense of direction in a career, you need to consult with a career professional. Uh, for instance, those who have studied uh, educational counseling or professional counseling. Uh, in, in, in most cases, we'll find that we get the dictates of families, family members about what we should do. But essentially, we should do what we have a soft spot for. In other words, this would, the career that would not have to labor so hard to be able to become successful. Because if we follow uh, a path that we have a soft spot for, you know, career becomes so easy and we will enjoy it. And therefore, my advice is that, you know, consult with a career professional to be able to get proper insight about what you need to do. And sometimes even people finish their master's degree and uh, they don't know what to do. Like I remember, you know, some cases in find the girls, they say, uh, what should I, I don't know, I'm confused. I don't know what to do now. Should I marry? Or should I go to get a job or should I go for further studies? So again, it boils down to the point that uh, we have some idea about what we want to do. And for me, I give a sense of direction to my followers in, in, in the sense that if you're a young person, I will advise you accordingly on what to do but based on your potential, your inclination. Inclinations uh, matters a lot because if you have a particular talent inclination, you should pursue that so that you can excel in that very easily. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, so how does a career actually relate to spirituality and Krishna consciousness? 
Other career work? Related to spirituality. Oh, and yeah. Basically, career related to uh, Krishna consciousness in a very sweet and amazing way. I can give you an example of myself. <laughs> that, that I can go to most places that I can go to most places and introduce Krishna consciousness to people uh, without any hindrance because, like, I am, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having two hats. I'm a career professional. I'm a scholar. I'm a, um, a research fellow. At the same time, a swami, a guru, and a, um, um, a sub member. Those who advise or review GBC uh, resolutions. I'm also a member of the samba. So. Like my career helped me to be able to make some input in terms of how organizations are managed and built. And also, it gives me the opportunity to be able to introduce Krishna consciousness to an audience who are who is either to advance to spirituality or religion. So when you have those type of high skills, then it becomes easy for people to have access to you, your professional colleagues, will understand that, well, you have values they don't have, and you may not even need to preach to them. They just come to ask you how they can be, be become a person like you. I've seen that, in, you know, in, in my own life. We travel to places, you know, I meet all of these professors, and, you know, they're very much uh, enthused to understand what makes me, what is making me to be so happy, uh, that's despite the challenges in academia. So, yeah. Your profession, your career, will help you a lot if you channel it in Krishna consciousness. So what specific careers are suitable to practicing uh, spirituality? Like, what specific careers do they Yeah, some people, it's a nice point. Some people, they think that, <laughs> they think that, uh, if, for instance, if you have to do, do a PhD, it must have, it has to be in religion or philosophy. But my PhD is in applied management and decision science. And I've used it to be able to appreciate amazing ways. Because what I do is integrate the management science concepts and constructs with Gaudiya Vaishnav technologies in profiling solutions to leadership, management, and social issues. And it, you know, that uh, approach to spreading Krishna consciousness is so intriguing. When people don't even know that they are they are becoming involved with Krishna consciousness, they are taking it very sweetly because the concept and uh, um, the introduction is so um, uh, is so intriguing to them. But then they go deeper and they understand that they have to develop their spirituality, and that makes a big difference. So yeah, any career that you are involved in could be dovetailed in Krishna consciousness. In fact, proper said. We should dovetail our talents, skills, in Krishna consciousness. If you've been you're involved in a particular uh, career that you may not directly use your skills in that career in Krishna consciousness, you can use your finances in supporting the woman. And for instance, you know, not everyone will go out to distribute books. So you can use your resources, your financial resources, to sponsor programs, to sponsor the publish, uh, publishing of books and all that stuff. Yes. So every career is useful in developing our Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj. So this is more about this question is more about you, and it's about like if maybe this was before you took uh, joined Krishna consciousness or uh, became the sannyasi. Uh, what career did you choose, and has that career helped in your spiritual life? And can oh. you give some examples too on how it's? Helped? Yeah, uh, I was basically intrigued by the idea that. One could become involved. If I can give an example, when I was a young man, I was very much interested in being, being becoming a scientist because our era was an era of science. Okay, <laughs> but then you know later on, I come to realize that you know you have to pursue a, a program or a career that you you have this, you have you you're free for yourself to be able to do anything and everything that you deem appropriate. So then, I studied uh, education and philosophy in my master in my uh, master degree, and that helped me to be able to have a deep understanding about the advancement of philosophy for children, and because the children are the the leaders of 
our society, the future leaders of our society. So I find it very uh, important and intriguing to be able to help children in progressing the, in the pro in the match for our progress in the social life, academic life, professional life, and also to integrate that with some metaphysical thoughts and ideas, and ultimately to come to the level of uh, practicing uh, spirituality. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, initially, I was involved in uh, philosophy and education, but then you know, when I came to the uh, on the part of Krishna consciousness, it becomes clear to me that yeah, I can use my skills in amazing ways. And so when I went, I went out, uh, had to do the PhD. I, I had uh, the commitment to uh, management and leadership. Mm -hmm. So if there's one piece of advice that you'd give to youth um, in Pandavasena, which is a youth group. Uh, in doing their Krishna consciousness and balancing their school life and careers too. What would that be? Yeah, it's a very simple formula. And I give this formula anywhere I go. People ask me, what's the best advice for young people? And if I, if I, if I even in India, you know, however, however big a program in Kolkata, that is a program. Some people come to interview me and uh, the same issues they ask, what, what's the advice for the young Young people in India, we, we, get, we run into problems. What, what advice do you have for the use of India? <laughs> so, but then, it's a different thing because not all the use of India are involved in Krishna consciousness. Yes. Here you are asking about the Pandava Seda means the devotees who are, you know, uh, involved in Krishna consciousness. What advice? Yeah, my advice is that it is very difficult if someone who has not done it may say it's not difficult, but it's very difficult to do your studies and practice that. But what makes it easy, a positive difference, is when you are meticulously and consistently managing your 24 hours effectively. You know, because why is that? See, in this age and uh, time, we have all of these distractions. Yeah. Not a major distraction, Digital system, the smartphones, the internet. I've seen people who lost their jobs. I've seen people who fell out from school because of this, this distraction from the modern uh, smartphones and the internet. So, if devotees who are growing up can understand the dangers of spending too much time on the internet, if they understand the dangers of spending too much time on their smartphones, they can make a better use of their time in their studies mm -hmm. and in cultivating the Krishna. So effectively managing your time is the watchword. Okay. Thank you so much, Manaras. Thank you so much for being part of this interview. You're welcome. Uh, please bless and pray for us so that we may do something for Philip Robert and for the great devotees uh, in this. That's awesome. Thank you, Manaras. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 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 H